Hey everybody, thanks for uh, joining us today to talk about jobs numbers. Uh, welcome to uh, our monthly update. Uh, as a reminder, please make sure your microphones are muted to, uh, to mitigate echoes. And if you have any questions, feel free to either put them in the chat or raise your hand at the end. Uh, we'll go through our presentation, starting with Commissioner Verilek, uh, and then we'll take those questions. If you have any technical difficulties, feel free to contact Dawn. She'll put her email in the chat. And with that, I will hand it over to Commissioner Verilek, and we'll get started. Sounds good. Thank you, Devin. Good morning, everybody. Happy July to you. Uh, we are pleased to present our monthly report on new labor market information. And starting out, we are reporting that Minnesota saw a decline in jobs and labor force participants from May to June. Specifically, we saw a decline of 3,200 jobs, which amounts to 0.1%. The private sector accounted for decline of 3,300, which is also 0.1%. Uh, at the moment, we don't see this as a long-term trend, given that Minnesota has gained jobs in eight out of the last 12 months. Nationally, for comparison, total non-farm jobs were up 0.1%, and the U.S. private sector was also up 0.1%. Moving on to labor force participation, Minnesota's rate now stands at 67.8%. That has ticked down 0.2 over the month. Uh, and that is because the labor force decreased by about the same number as the jobs figure that we just mentioned, 3,174 uh, person decline from May to June. Uh, for context, Minnesota's labor force participation rate of 67.8% continues to compare very favorably to the national rate, which is at 626 .6 and up one tenth of a point. Next, moving to unemployment. Minnesota's rate stands at 2.9% for June. Hours ticked up one tenth of a uh, one tenth of a percentage point from May to June to that 2.9 figure. Nationally, the unemployment rate also increased one tenth of a percent to 4.1%. So we will, of course, continue to keep a close eye on all these indicators as the Fed continues its efforts to achieve the so-called soft landing of reducing inflation without a sharp slowdown in output. And I would say that in Minnesota and elsewhere, we continue to believe that job growth, and especially in certain sectors, is constrained by a shortage of available workers with necessary skills. Deeds workforce development programs, such as the Drive for Five, targeted populations, clean economy, equitable workforce, and others funded during the 2023 legislative session are now being implemented to help bring more Minnesotans into the labor force with high demand skills. And just to give you an example, a couple of weeks ago, I was with Paul Williams, who is the CEO of Project for Pride in Living in Minneapolis. And he introduced me to a room full of young people engaged in phlebotomy training to advance their careers in healthcare. And the training was funded by a Drive for Five grant from DEED. So it was great to see workforce development in action on that day and to see the enthusiasm on the faces of workers who will go on to earn better wages and meet critical needs in an important sector of the economy. Drive for Five and other programs I just mentioned are, of course, in addition to all of our more longstanding programs uh, for workforce development at DEED. And I'm pleased to note that across the Walls Flanagan administration, we're also working hard to achieve even greater alignment and efficiency across other agencies with workforce development resources, such as the Office of Higher Ed, Department of Labor and Industry, Department of Education, and Department of Human Services, just to name a few. So now, uh, back to our economic indicators. Finally, uh, and I would say last but not least, let's talk about wages and inflation, which of course are on the mind of many. Wages for Minnesota workers, again, outpaced inflation, as well as national wage growth uh, by a pretty healthy margin. Uh, average hourly wages for all private sector workers increased $2.02 .02 in Minnesota, or 5.7% over the year. The Consumer Price Index, which is a common measure of inflation, rose 3% over the year, meaning wages increased almost twice as fast as inflation in Minnesota. And this is, of course, good news in the sense that it takes pressure off household budgets by giving workers and families greater purchasing power. Nationally, private sector wages grew 4.7% over the year. In other words, the national rate of wage increases also exceeded the rate of inflation, but to a lesser degree than we had in Minnesota. 
So with that, I will hand things off to Labor Market Information Director Angelina Nguyen for a deeper dive into the details. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to go through the details by super sector. So four super sectors in Minnesota gain jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis over the month, and I'm going to list them in order of the number of jobs gained. So education and health services uh, let the gain up 4,500 jobs, which is 0.8%. Construction gained 300 jobs, uh, up 0.2%. Mining and logging gained 100 jobs, up 1.5%. And government gained 100 jobs, um, but it, is, it means no percent change for uh, government since that's a big uh, super sector. And then six super sectors lost jobs over the month. Again, I'll mention them in the order of the number of jobs lost. Professional and business services saw the biggest loss of 3,000 jobs, down 0.8%. Leisure and hospitality, hospitality lost 2,100 jobs, down also 0.8%. Manufacturing lost 1,600 jobs, down 0.5%. Other services lost 800 jobs, down 0.7%. Trade, transportation, and utilities lost 600 jobs, down 0.1%. And lastly, financial activities lost 100 jobs, down 0.1%. Uh, the information super sector was the uh, one super sector that did not see change uh, over the month. So overall, the gains were smaller than the losses. Um, so in total, Minnesota lost 3,200 jobs uh, over the month on a seasonally adjusted basis. And as uh, Commissioner Verilek mentioned, that's 0.1% decrease. The private sector lost 3,300 jobs, also 0.1% decrease. In the prior month report for May, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised up by 2,300 jobs. So the final estimate is that we lost 6,300 jobs between April and May, rather than the originally estimated 8,600 job loss. Next, I'm gonna talk about labor force. Our labor force size decreased by uh, almost 3,200 people over the month. So totaling, we have uh, 3,096,798 people in our labor force for June. The number of, of that, the number employed decreased by uh, 7,582 people, and the number of unemployed increased by 4,408 people. So a, lo a little dip in our labor force, um, and compared to pre-pandemic uh, February 2020, our labor force is 34,770 people smaller than it was um, pre-pandemic. In terms of labor force participation rates, that ticks down two tenths of a percentage point to 67.8% for June. But looking at the longer run, our labor force participation rate has been hovering around 68% for years um, since uh, recovery from the pandemic. And then I am going to talk about over the year employment change by super sector next. So over the, over the year, Minnesota gained 29,711 payroll jobs, which is a 1% growth. Uh, by comparison, the U.S. over the year growth rate is 1.6%. Our private sector gained 10,295 jobs over the year. Um, in comparison, the U.S. private sector grew 1.5%. Four super sectors posted annual job growth in Minnesota, and I'm going to list them by um, number of jobs gained. So education and health services let the gain with more than 39,000 jobs up 7.1% for Minnesota, outpacing the national rate of 4.2%, and growth was strong in all subsectors. Government was second, gaining uh, almost 19,500 jobs, up 4.6%, and again, outpacing the U.S. growth rate of 2.6%. And uh, again, growth was healthy across all sectors of government, especially uh, local government. Leisure and hospitality gained more than 7,000 jobs, up 2.5%. And all subsectors grew except for um, arts, entertainment, and recreation, which we saw a decline of 3.5%. Um, and by comparison, nationally, this super sector grew 1.7%. And lastly, other services gained more than 2,000 jobs in Minnesota, which is a 1.8% growth rate. 
and that's a little higher than the national rate of 1.6%. And all subsectors post posted growth for Minnesota. And on the flip side, seven super sectors lost jobs over the year in Minnesota. Um, the biggest uh, super sector with jobs lost was professional and business services, lost more than 19,000 jobs, down 4.9%, while the U.S. grew 0.3%. And the declines were in management of companies and enterprises, which uh, we saw almost a 6% decline, and administrative and support and waste management and remediation services, which we saw a decline of more than 11%. Uh, the second biggest loss was in manufacturing super sector. It was down almost uh, 8,500 jobs, which is a 2.6% decline. Uh, almost all subsectors experienced decline um, under manufacturing. Uh, for comparison, the U.S. manufacturing super sector did not change over the year. Financial activities lost almost 5,000 jobs in Minnesota, down 2.6%. Uh, the U.S. grew 0.3% for the super sector, and losses uh, were consistent all sub in all subsectors here. Construction is next, losing um, about 2,400 jobs, down 1.6%. And again, losses were consistent in all subsectors. And by comparison, the U.S. construction super sector grew 2.8%. Information lost more than 2,000 jobs, down 4.7%. And all subsectors and under information saw decline in Minnesota. Um, the U.S. also saw a decline in the super sector, down 1%. Trade, transportation, and utilities lost about uh, 900 jobs, down 0.2%. And um, under this super sector, we saw retail trade and wholesale trade each decline uh, by 0.3%, while transportation, warehousing, and utilities grew 0.4%. And nationally, the U.S. Uh, grew 0.7% for this super sector. And then lastly, mining and logging lost 26 jobs, which is a 0.4% decline for Minnesota. Um, the U.S. also saw a decline in the super sector, down 1.4%. And lastly, wages and inflation. As the commissioner had mentioned, average hourly wages for all private sector workers increased 27 cents in Minnesota. So in June, um, the hourly pay was $37.37 .37, um, over the month. And over the year, wages increased by more than $2, so up 5.7%. And nationally, um, over the month, um, wages increased 20 cents and uh, grew 4.7% over the year. So by comparison, both Minnesota wage growth and U.S. wage growth uh, beats the inflation rate of 3%. Um, and that has generally been the wage growth is uh, surpassed this inflation rate. And something we've seen consistently for the last six months in a row is Minnesota's wage growth has been higher than both the U.S. wage growth and the inflation rate. All right, Commissioner, back to you. Very good. Thanks so much, Angelina. And with that, I would open the floor for any questions. Going once, twice, and a third time. Well, if, oh, here we go. Uh, question from Emma. Let's see, can we talk about why we don't expect this to be a long-term trend? Well, and I would say we're not uh, making any predictions, but based on a look back at the historical trend or or uh, the, the last 12 months, for example, seeing that some months we go up, some we go down, but that uh, the total is eight out of 12 months of growth. Uh, we don't yet see this as amounting to a longer term trend. And uh, again, emphasize uh, our efforts to do what we can through our programs and then in coordination with other state agencies to uh, bring people into the labor force. Angelina, would you add anything to that? No, nope, that I was gonna would give the same answer uh, in terms of um, 
the first question. Uh, to address the second question that Emma had, uh, what drove the loss uh, over the month in June? Um, so usually we would see um, like half of our super sectors gain jobs and the other half lose jobs. Um, this month for June, there were more losers than gainers. So we've had four super sectors gain jobs and six super sectors lose jobs. Um, the the gains was healthy in education and health services. Um, but the uh, the super sectors that lost jobs just outnumber the gainers, and um, that's why we've seen this this uh, over the month loss. But nothing uh, jumps out at me as being like you know the single uh, reason for that. Any other questions? Thank you, Emma. Folks? Yep. Sorry, Devin. No, absolutely. I was just seeing if we have any other questions. And if not, I can turn it back to Commissioner Verilak to close us out. Yeah, sounds good, Devin. And thanks again for the folks that are here. Uh, just to recap, we lost 3,200 jobs or 0.1%. Labor force participation rate down two tenths to 67.8. Unemployment rate up to 2.9, uh, which is a one tenth percent change or 0.1% change over the month. Uh, and then finally, put in context, these numbers continue to reflect a very tight labor market, which again underscores the importance of workforce development efforts all across the state. Uh, would say for the future, I hope you can join us for our next employment numbers release, which will take place on August 15th. Hope you have a great summer and a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.